So <clears throat> today <clears throat> we'll talk about the vertigo. Uh, what is vertigo? Uh, if you want any any time to ask any questions, uh, it's welcome, and uh, we can uh, answer uh, during the lecture. Uh, the lecture is very simple. I will try to to speak as uh, you are in front of my, me in the clinic, explaining to you if you have any, uh, or you want to know about uh, dizziness and vertigo. There is a big difference between dizziness and vertigo. Uh, the, the vertigo itself, the true vertigo, a sense of rotation of either the patient himself or herself or the surroundings. Uh, this is a true vertigo, what, what we are going to talk about it today. But there is something else like dizziness or, uh, or uh, uh, feeling of lightheadedness or these things. This is uh, more medical and uh, you, 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 this is related to the medical uh, problems like anemia, diabetes, hypertension, so or sinusitis, something like this. But the the vertigo, the true vertigo, is the one which there is a problem in the balance itself. Right. If you want to know about the reasons for true vertigo, we have to know first. What, how the balance uh, done uh, and who is, who is responsible, which are the organs responsible about balance. The balance is controlled by central and peripheral. So what, what, what I want to say that there is some sensory fibers, like sensory or sensation coming from peripheral organs going to the brain, the, these sensory fibers going to uh, uh, in the brain stem or what is uh, the, the stimular nuclei or the vertigo nuclei or the balance nuclei, nuclei these centers of the balance there, controlled by the brain, by the, 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 the high brain, but the higher centers in the brain, and uh, adjusted or uh, all these sensory fibers adjusted by the cerebellum, something named the cerebellum. So uh, what is these fibers coming from where? coming from mainly the eye, coming mainly the eye, and from the inner ear, a, a, place, a part in the inner ear, which is responsible about balance. That part of the inner ear gives sensory impulses or uh, fibers, through the fibers to that centers with the fibers from the eyes and also from the joints and uh, the, what's named the proprioceptive fibers, which are coming from the mainly the neck and the uh, ankle joints. So the balance can be controlled by the cere cerebrum what is the higher center and coordinated all these fibers coordinated by the cerebellum. So again, the balance is, the, to, what is responsible for the balance? The peripheral and central. Peripheral are coming from the ear, the eye, and proprioceptive fibers from the joints and muscles, mainly neck, and the ankle joints. These fibers co 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 coordinated by the cerebellum 
and controlled by the zebra. This is the balance of our body. Any problem or any disturbance in this organ, in these organs, will make you sen have a sense of imbalance or sense of uh, rotation. If it is peripheral, this is this patient usually uh, will have uh, the, the, uh, the, the I will show I will tell you at the, uh, in the lecture how we will differentiate between the peripheral and central. But to know the main reason or cause of true vertigo or sense of rotation is peripheral. And the main, uh, it's about 90% of the cause or more than 90%. And the main peripheral cause is inner ear and, and, and uh, something named rotational vertigo or positional vertigo. So now again, the main reason is peripheral. The main reasons are peripheral, more than 90%. And the, more, and the, more, the main problem, the peripheral uh, disorder, the main peripheral disorder is inner ear. And the inner ear <coughs> uh, has <coughs> uh, many reasons. The most common one is rotational vertigo or positional vertigo. This is very simple to, to, to talk about the etiologies of the, or the reasons of the dizziness. Of course, the, some cases, central, and these cases, the central, uh, we, how to, to, we, we will differentiate between it and, and uh, referral, we'll talk about this. Okay, so uh, the, the how to manage if the patient come or the, if, if you have a dizziness at your home and you want to know what is this, what is this, uh, or you want to know, uh, yeah, uh, yani, uh, before you go to the doctor, which doctor you will go, which doctor you will go, because you have, if you have a, a, a true vertigo and you want to go, how yeah, any sense of rotation, sense of uh, when you are sleeping or, or when you are walking or when you are sitting uh, and and uh, cooking or in the kitchen, something like this, and then you feel something some, over time. Where you will go? What are you going to do also? This is very important. You will go, I, I told you in the beginning that the, the main reason is the, the peripheral. And the main reason of the peripheral is the uh, uh, inner ear and the main reason and the inner ear is rotational vertigo. Okay, so if you have rotational vertigo, rotational vertigo means that you have, if you look in certain position by your head, or if you are sleeping and moving uh, uh, right or left, you feel dizziness, or you feel vertigo, or you feel rotation. This most probably is a positional vertigo. So you will go to ENT doctor. In this case, you will go to ENT doctor. If you feel a problem in your eyes and, uh, and your vision are, uh, is not uh, perfect or uh, the eyeglass which you are wearing is not perfect, go to the eye doctor. If you, you can start by the, uh, that doctor because sometimes the EMT doctor will refer you also to the other doctors. But if you have a loss of consciousness, you lost your consciousness. No, you have to go to neurology or neurologist. You will go to the neurologist. Uh, uh, this this case in this case 
if you lose your consciousness, this is uh, possible central, central reasons. Also, if you have any abnormal in sensation or abnormal in your power of your hands or your uh, legs or uh, any part of your body and your abnormal sensation in your face, in your body, any in one side or two sides, whatever, you have to go to the neurologist. So th this is a trial to differentiate between the, uh, the peripheral and the central and uh, uh, which doctor you will go. So now, if you will go to the doctor, the doctor what uh, is going to do? Is going to ask you about the history of your rotation. The history of your rotation and how it is bad, if it is severe or moderate or mild, and the attack, how long it takes. This is the attack is if it is a few seconds or less than one minute, it is suggesting the again the positional vertigo. Positional vertigo usually comes with uh, seconds or less than a minute. You feel rotation. Please, if you will feel this sense, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Look at any any uh, object in front of you and concentrate in this for a few seconds, it will finish. But if you will close your eyes, it will be more and more. It will be severe. Also, please relax. Try to relax. Try not to scare. Try to uh, keep uh, quiet and sit without moving for a few seconds. Also, it will finish quick. So this is very important, especially if the attacks recur. If it will recur, better to uh, deal with the, these attacks uh, uh, by this way. I'm telling the patient, if you will have attack and it, it came before, please tell, tell, tell the attack, you are welcome, even. Oh, you came, you are welcome, like this. So don't, don't uh, be afraid, relax. This is very important, because if you will be afraid, you will have uh, many, many symptoms like nausea, vomiting, uh, sweating, uh, many, many things, palpitation. So better to relax and avoid all of these uh, uh, symptoms. The other thing which is important, uh, what is associated with vertigo? If you, the vertigo comes with tinnitus or hearing loss, or abnormal sensation. The tinnitus and the hearing loss are now going to another resource, not the positional one, the common one. Because tinnitus and the hearing loss or sense of blockage of your ear, this is uh, something in the inner ear, yes, something in the inner ear, but it is uh, uh, most probably uh, something named Meniere's. So, uh, so okay. So now you have to know the, the so now if the symptoms associated with uh, hearing loss or tinnitus, it is still ear problems, inner ear problems. But what is this? This is. Uh, uh, something named the years. I, I, I don't like to talk too much about the pathophysiology of each disorder. This is not important for you, but at least to know that the positional one, because you will hear this from many doctors, that there is some crest that's more detached from one place going to another place. We by some no? if the, the patients have CT 
scan appointments, they should put it here. Hello? In yes. The, in the what talking. did you say? Someone talking. Yeah, yeah, sorry, doctor. Sorry, somebody unmuted. You can carry on. Okay. So, in positional vertigo, which is the most popular or the most common one, and I consider it 90% of all the cases, the, the crystals, some crystals, calcium crystals, detach it from one place to another place by fluid in the inner ear, which is named the endolymph. This, another place that, that uh, it make, because it is in an abnormal place, so it makes dizziness. So this, this, these crystals, in our treatment or our management, we are trying to take these crystals again to the other place, to its original place, to its original place. I will tell you later how to do this. But now, to know many reasons, one of them is uh, uh, positional vertigo. The other things like meniere's, which is, it means there is more fluid, more endolymph inside the inner ear. Uh, and this makes the hearing and the a sound also affecting both, plus the vertigo. Other things like infection in the inner in the ear, making infection in the inner ear, uh, like labyrinthites. Another thing, these are the common things. I'm telling the common things. Uh, the common peripheral ear reasons are these uh, causes. Another one which is common or, or important for us is acoustic neuroma. What is this acoustic neuroma? It's a tumor, small tumor in the nerve of balance. And it is affecting uh, the, 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 the balance and affecting the hearing. And we can, uh, hearing before balance. And we, if we will see one ear affected uh, in hearing more than the other, especially if we know now that it is sensory neural type, so this is for more investigation like MRI to check if it is acoustic norma or not. But this is something, uh, it's real, but it's very important. Because this is different in, if you will know it early, the acoustic neuroma, the morbidity is too low. But if you will know it later or after giving neurological symptoms, this is the, it will be bad mor morbidity. So at least now, you know that we have to check ourselves. We have an attack. Now I have attack. So what is the attack? How it, how long it takes? It takes a few seconds. Okay, fine. When I, I, I am sleeping or I am moving from one uh, position to another. Okay, fine. This is all going with positional. And the attack, if I will open my eyes, it is finishing quickly. And if I will close, it will prolong it. This is still with the Positional vertigo, positional benign. The benign one means the peripheral one, not the central one. And it is not associated with any symptoms like neurological or tinnitus or hearing loss. Neurological like abnormal sensation or power, abnormal or uh, uh, weakness in your power or uh, uh, headache or something, uh, any neurological symptoms. Uh, if it is like this, so you are in the safe side, it is a benign positional one. Uh, this is enough for you about the... Uh, I'm trying to move the slide, but the slide is not moving. Uh, 
Okay. So what are we going to do? We'll examine the patient after we take the history from the patient. We'll examine the patient. And <clears throat> very important, of course, to talk about, uh, to see uh, generally <clears throat> quickly the cranial nerves, the sensation, uh, because maybe I will uh, the gait, the posture of the patient, uh, how is he standing, how is he moving, how is he uh, walking. These things are important for us to uh, differentiate between the cases which is peripheral or central. Uh, and if I will refer the patient to a neurologist or to eye doctor. Also, if uh, maybe it is not a, a, a case of uh, true vertigo, maybe it is orthostatic hypotension, say something like the, the name, name of orthostatic hypotension means when you are sitting, you are okay. If you are standing suddenly from sitting, you will feel dizziness. This is named orthostatic hypotension, the pressure, the blood pressure going down more than usual, because it usually is going down, but more than usual, more than 10. Uh, this is means that it is uh, also static hypotension. This is deal, de de dealt with uh, uh, internal medicine or physician. So also we'll check the ear. Yeah, maybe there is <clears throat> infection in the ear, maybe clusteatoma, maybe something affecting the inner ear. Uh, of course, as I said, uh, we have to examine the uh, whole body. Uh, again, uh, we'll talk about, again, uh, a way to confirm the positional vertigo. This is test, not important for you to know, <clears throat> but we are do, uh, trying to Provoke, provoke, provoke the, uh, uh, the, the vertigo. How? By putting the patient in certain position, which make him dizzy. This is the uh, base of the uh, next whole bike uh, maneuver, which is uh, for confirming vertigo. Positional vertigo, confirming positional vertigo. Any, any, any question? By this way, as you see, we are holding the head, taking the head hanging down on the table on one side, then on the other side, looking to the eyes. We ask the patient to keep the eyes open all the time of the test. And then we'll see how if there is any nystagmus or not. Nystagmus means rotation of the eyes uh, from one side to another side or up and down. Up and down suggesting central more than peripheral, but side to side with one rapid, one slow movement. This is something to, to Yanni or you. It's, for it's not important for you, but at least to know that the eyes is moving automatically or spontaneously moving, or so moving. Or uh, sometimes we are uh, we are in, inducing nystagmus. Uh, what tests? What what investigations after examination of the patient and? Uh, what investigation, what we are going to do. Many investigations, we can put it in categories, four categories. Uh, the first category is blood test. Of course, you will do some blood tests like hemoglobin at least, uh, blood sugar. Uh, these are important. Sometimes if he has a thyroid, we have to do thyroid function. So this is a part of the investigations. The other uh, category is uh, autological uh, investigations, which is important. You have to uh, do at least audiogram. Audiogram means uh, hearing test uh, under uh, our audiometer to check 
the level. This is important maybe to differentiate between meniers and, uh, and labyrinthitis with uh, acoustic neuroma. Uh, these other uh, are, uh, are uh, one side and the other side is a benign positional vertigo. Positional vertigo has no hearing loss. <clears throat> Uh, also, we will do vestibular investigations. Vestibular investigations, that's what we, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's uh, a, 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 a new, or not a new, yeah, it's uh, not every, in every way, in, in every hospital uh, uh, available, but we, in our hospital, it is available, and it is uh, an, an, a, a tool of investigation uh, to induce, first to check if there is nystagmus or not <clears throat> with positional vertigo. If we put him in an, a certain position and uh, uh, as, uh, as we are, we did in this DEX or bike maneuver, uh, if it is happened, the vertigo, we can check it by what, by before, uh, 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 we are doing it by goggles, special goggles, but now we are doing it but, but by, by uh, uh, something named video nystagmography. You are putting a, a goggle connected to the, uh, by this infrared one connected to uh, a machine and uh, to the laptop, and we are inducing the vertigo by positioning the patient, or we are inducing it by caloric testing. And this, this uh, gives some water or air, uh, seven degree below and above the body temperature. So we can know also uh, from the results, if there is canal paresis or direction preponderance, these are not important for you, at least to know that we can differentiate between the side, the different uh, reasons for uh, over time. So uh, all are investigations uh, which will help us to know if it is central or peripheral, and if it is peripheral, which peripheral. Is that positional or is that uh, nears or uh, uh, labyrinthitis or acoustic neuroma? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so now we are talking, the last category is the radiological investigations. Radiological investigations, which will be the, uh, like MRI, MRI, as I told you in the beginning, if we are suspect acoustic neuroma, you will do MRI uh, to know if there is a tumor or something, or center, if, or maybe if you if suspect a central reason, you will, you may do MRI or you will ask the neurologist to see the patient and then you will most probably will ask for MRI. Okay, these are the investigations. What are the treatment? The treatment is, as I said in the beginning, the most common one is the positional. And the most common positional is the benign one. Benign means peripheral. Because positional also may be central, but it's very few cases. But the most common is the peripheral. So the positional one, peripheral one, that's what we are concentrating in the treatment today. Treatment is to ask the patient to relax, to uh, try not to move in the position which is making him dizzy. To uh, open, keep eyes open, and to uh, avoid uh, any movement. Okay, so this is the treatment. The first uh, first aid of treatment of positional vertigo. Most of the cases improved alone, improved 
closed. Some cases needs some days, a few days of medicine, which is sedating the vestibular nuclei and improving the blood to the inner ear, like uh, beta stein hydrochloride. So this, this medicine uh, possible giving to the positional. Okay, but there is a very important maneuver for positional vertigo after confirming it by dexholbike maneuver or by video nystagmography, we have uh, to do a particles, something named particles repositioning maneuver. This is Ebley's maneuver. Uh, how? This is, you can see here how to do it. You will take the patient, you will ask the patient to put Bello under his shoulders and uh, the head will be hanging down. Then you will turn, you will take the patient, you will ask the patient or you as a doctor can do it or the patient himself can do it at home. He can sleep with the Bello under his shoulders, head hanging and then Sleep on one side, turn his head to one side, turn his head to one side, about 45 degrees for 45 seconds. And then move his head for 45 seconds to the other side, 45 degrees. Then turn to the side of the table and sleep on, you, on, on his side with the head looking down to the corner or to the ground. Then uh, for 45 seconds, always keep the eyes open. This is very important. Keep the eyes open and concentrated in one, in one uh, object or, 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 or one point. Very important to know that this will make you dizzy. So don't be afraid. Someone if he is beside you is good. So if you will feel dizziness, no problem, Co continue the, the training, the exercise. Then sit on the table and move your head down for 45 seconds and then up for 45 seconds. This is good for, as a treatment for the positional vertigo. Very, very, very rare that it, uh, this uh, position of vertigo will need surgery. So uh, this is treatment for the most common one. Any questions uh, I can answer now. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions now. Yes, please. Any questions, we are, we are ready. Doctor, we received a chat uh, question. At what age is vertigo most common? This, uh, I, I will tell you something very important. Vertigo will, this vertigo, everyone in his life will have. Everyone, if you don't have it, when you are in uh, young age, you will have it in the middle age, you will have it in the uh, uh, old, old age. So you will suffer from vertigo in your life. See how it is very common, but that's it. This is the answer. Vertigo will, can happen any time, any age, and it can be, uh, and it will happen. It will happen for everyone. You will you will test it before die. <laughs> and it will be clear, possible. Yes, of course, vertigo is not is not dangerous. As I told you, the most common the most common uh, cause is a benign one, a benign positional one. So it's more than ninety nine percent. Uh, 
uh, is not dangerous and please ignore it. Please ignore it. If you can, but the problem is that you can't. You will, once you will have that, that sense of rotation, you will feel that most of, uh, of us will be afraid and you will go quickly to the doctors to see. <laughs> That's why. But if you can ignore it, it's good. Very good. Because it's nine, more than 99% is a uh, positional benign one. Possible, the answer for a daughter has business and loss of energy, all tests done normal. Can this be vertigo? Uh, it can be vertigo, it can't be vertigo. It's also maybe not vertigo. Because as, as I said in the beginning, is she feeling uh, that there is a, a rotation, that she's rotating or the surroundings, surroundings are rotating or she feel lightheadedness or feeling of uh, uh, imbalance or something like this. So it's different. There is a different. You have to ask more questions about the nature of that business. So uh, possible it is vertigo, true one. And uh, uh, it could happen, as I told you, in the very young uh, uh, age. And uh, yes, the common is the middle and the uh, uh, middle age uh, and the old age. The common is this, but it could be happened in the young age. Another question is, I feel some time, sometimes dizziness, imbalance, feeling in legs due to vibration inside work. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, possible not a true vertigo because uh, it's related to pressure in your work or related to the vibration in your site work. So possible it's not a true vertigo. As I said, is vertigo related to low blood pressure? <clears throat> I said to you, there is something named orthostatic hypotension. This is the one, but it is not vertigo, it is dizziness. It is not a true one. It is dizziness or it is feeling of uh, uh, dizzy once you are sitting and standing suddenly. Uh, hi, Dr. Graf. Yes, hi. This is Louisa. Um, actually, just suffered from vertigo um Tuesday. So it was early morning, like I, probably when my son moved around the bed, um one one a.m. Um, the surrounding started spinning. So based on what you've lectured us, I think I, I have this positional positional yes. vertigo, yes. right? Yes, what you are saying is positional one. Yes. Yeah. And I think last time I had this was in February and it was very bad because I had to throw up like a number of times in a day and I had to go to emergency room just to have, you know, the treatment because it, it wasn't improving and it was very bad. So I was, mm -hmm. given, I was given a medication called beta -Cert. Yes. Yeah. So, that's, that's yeah. Chloride. Yes. so I, so when I had that Tuesday, um, I wasn't, it stopped and then the morning away I woke up it happened again so I just had to make sure that I wasn't moving a lot and then a colleague of mine uh, gave me this steps to do like the one the treatment of BPPV that you showed to us on the screen so I did that like you know uh, 30 seconds on the left and the right for five I, I watched a video on YouTube and it, it helped doctor it really helped so that exercise really helped Yes, 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 yes. You are, this is very important exercise, yes. Yeah, Doc, so... Yes, it's not enough, the, 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 the medicine. Uh, so I, I, started, I started taking it, though, because um, it was bad last Tuesday night, and I'm still taking it. Can I stop it, and then just continue with the exercise? Yes, yes, of course. The, stop the medication? Sorry? 
I can stop the medication because I took better. Yes, you can. You can stop the medication. And just continue uh, start the exercise. First, start the first with a proper exercise. That one which I told you about the repositioning maneuver. That one which I told you to do it. Yep, that's correct. Try okay. to do it in a, in a proper way. And I, I'm sure after one or two days, you don't, you will not need any medication. But in very, very, very few cases, you need. And uh, some cases, I'm giving them the beta cert for a long uh, uh, time. For some very, very few cases. Mm -hmm. They are in need for beta cert for long for a long time, but it's maybe not your uh, case. Yeah, it so stopped. Please. I had lessened it, it lessened my like dizziness, so I still have very slight like you know something like headache, but the rotation it stopped anymore, so I don't experience good. that. Good. So try to live with this for a while and neglect it. As someone said, I can I neglect. Yes, you can neglect. Neglect it for few. Uh, days or a few weeks even and wait and see if, if it's still the exercise, no? yeah. if it is still persisting uh, I think better to see an ENT doctor okay. Okay. Sure. thank you so much welcome good morning good morning thank you yes uh, I have a case in my daughter she, she feels uh, dizziness when she gets out of bed every morning and uh, loss of strength. So uh, she, Doctor, she how has old had, is she? How old is she? She's 41. 41, okay. Yes. And uh, so many tests have been done. Every walk up has been done, they are all normal. But she's still feeling this weakness when she gets out of bed in the morning. She, at times she's not able to stand. So at the stage, they gave her some uh, uh, antihypertensive drugs, like they gave her nat nat natrilix and uh, amylodipine. But at the stage, the doctor said, no, she should stop. So I was thinking this dizziness of standing is either due to hypotension or vertigo. So I said, she should see an ENT doctor but after seeing an ENT doctor, he said there's nothing wrong with the air, but he orders two Geron tablet for her to use. But the situation is still the same. What can she do? Uh, I prefer in this case to see a neurologist also, because okay. we have now symptoms other than vertigo. That okay. symptoms, feeling of weakness, uh, 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 the weakness in the power of your, her legs. So uh, uh, I prefer to see the neurologist and to rule out any central reasons. Okay. But can she still continue this to Geron drug? I, I prefer, again, not to, I mean, this is the best to see a neurologist because maybe it's a, not an, a, a positional vertigo or not a, a peripheral one. Thank you so much. So the medication will not help you. The okay. best to see the neurologist first. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for everyone and uh, for your coming and for listening. And uh, I'm so happy to uh, share my information with you and uh, good luck. Not to have <laughs> Although I said everyone will taste it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, much Dr. Thank you, Doc. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.